<laughs> Hi, Mrs. Neutron. What a shame. It was a good account. What a rotten thing to post. Hello, Richard. In front of you is a ten pound pile of peas. You will. Wait, what are you doing? Stop fucking eating them! Where are the freaking hookers? Hello, hello, my name is Cruz Mix, and today I'd like to talk to you about the whole Joe Rogan Spotify situation. So, if you've been living under a rock, I'll give you a little recap. Around two weeks ago, these 270 medical professionals, in air quotes, because I think it's just people on Twitter.com with a doctorate in their profile, but these 270 medical experts decided to sign this petition telling Spotify to remove Joe Rogan or censor him for his misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccine. And this really didn't garner any support, no one really cared, no one really thought about it. But uh, this week, Neil Young, in response seemingly to Joe Rogan's newest podcast with Jordan B. Peterson, decided to give Spotify an ultimatum. Now, if you don't know who Neil Young is, I don't blame you, because I didn't either, and a lot of Twitter.com didn't. So Neil Young is this sort of washed up background character rock star, and a lot of people are claiming his band is owned by Pfizer, but I'm not sure about that. I don't know, that seems almost too coincidental. But he gives Spotify this ultimatum saying, it's my content or Joe Rogan's. So. Spotify, obviously not willing to get rid of someone they paid millions of dollars for, decided to yeet Neil Young right off of their thing. And now, in addition to Neil Young, there's been more and more of these forgotten, kind of useless rock stars and background characters coming out in support. For instance, Joni Mitchell. I had never heard of Joni Mitchell, I had never heard of Neil Young. All of these people are coming out in loving support for this man, this David and Goliath figure fighting this mountain, fighting these peaks, because he is such a righteous individual. Let me tell you, this is a hero right here, a saint, fighting a one-sided battle. So these people have come out removing their content from Spotify too. It's honestly amazing what people can do together and achieve so little from it. But no, in all seriousness, what do they think they're going to gain from this? Like, this isn't really an especially growing movement. People clearly care more about Joe Rogan than they do these absolutely forgotten musicians, but that's kind of obviously not the point. They weren't really trying to achieve anything here, I don't think. I think really deep down the whole point was to garner just a little crumb, the little uh, juicy bits of attention that they could get from Twitter.com for pulling their content off of Spotify. And by now, Joe Rogan has, in fact, responded on his Instagram page talking about how what is considered misinformation one day can be considered actual fact because science, you know, it kind of changes. So, uh, here, let's run the clip of that. Uh, whoops, th this, this is the right clip of him talking about all that. The problem I have with the term misinformation, especially today, is that many of the things that we thought of as misinformation just a short while ago are now accepted as fact. Like, for instance, eight months ago, if you said, if you get vaccinated, you can still catch COVID and you can still spread COVID, you would be removed from social media. They would, they would ban you from certain platforms. Now, that's accepted as fact. If you said, I don't think cloth masks work, you would be banned from social media. Now, that's openly and repeatedly stated on CNN. If you said, I think it's possible that COVID-19 came from a lab, you'd be banned from many social media platforms. Now, that's on the cover of Newsweek. All of those theories that at one point in time were banned were openly discussed by those two men that I had on my podcast that have been accused of dangerous misinformation. So after all is said and done, where are we? Well, Spotify has decided to start placing disclaimers onto his podcast to make sure that people know there might just be a little bit of a little flake, a little crumb of misinformation in things, which, back in the day, the internet just used to, you know, have that as an unspoken rule. Everything was to be taken with a grain of salt, but now apparently everything needs warning labels. However, Joe Rogan does seem to be on board with this, so... 
make of that what you will. I'm just not really a fan of all this growing sense that we need to have everything partitioned off. Everyone needs to be warned about every little thing, and dangerous people need to be kept away from the public. Like back in the day, crazy people were just the most entertaining thing on the face of the earth. Like, how could you not enjoy watching Alex Jones? I'm truly appalled that he's gone off of YouTube, because now I have to look for his content, and that's just annoying. I want to see him talk about the most insane bullshit. I want to listen to him describe the psychic lobsters, alright? And I just don't want to see what happened to him happen to Joe Rogan. And I get he's on the side of Spotify, but it's kind of worrying to see more and more of this kind of thing happen. I mean, if these forgotten people who barely make an impact even whenever they're threatening to remove their content off the biggest like content aggregator for music can effectively get their way by making Spotify throw disclaimers onto things, it seems like someone larger could easily just have him yeeted off the platform, which kind of happens to people pretty frequently. I mean, if you don't have lawyers, you almost always get removed for, like, minuscule shit. Like, Leafy is here, which I might talk about in another video, but Leafy is here just got removed for seemingly nothing. I mean, making fun of people's man on YouTube, but, like, that? <laughs> That was like two or three videos making fun of someone. It's tragic. And there's almost this growing culture with tech companies to just remove anyone that the public deems kind of untouchable, which is just sad because like one minute it's people like Alex Jones. It's, you know, you think, yeah, yeah, they're crazy. So it's okay for them to be like, you know get the yoinky sploinky from YouTube, but eventually it's regular people, it's gonna be Joe Rogan's, it's gonna be kind of everyone, and it's probably gonna swing left at some point, too. Like, if you're Vosh, <laughs> you don't stand a chance, dude. Like, that's that's not gonna be okay forever. What that guy does, he defends pedophilia like once a week, he cannot last forever. So I don't really see it as much of a political thing. I see it more as like a growing sentiment that eventually anything even slightly out of bounds will be removed until everything is just center, and even the center is like curved to a circle. It's like that episode of Spongebob where it moves all the edges and becomes this weird, flat, smooth entity. That's kind of what the internet is becoming, and I hate to see it, and I feel like this is another step in that direction. But in the end, I'm not super concerned, because it feels like there's always going to be a market for edgy content, for out there behaviors, and whenever they realize that, there's going to be another resurgence, and another resurgence, and this endless renaissance, this sort of Ouroboros loop of edgy content coming in and out. We kind of saw this with the TV. It got more and more family friendly, and then became more and more out there, and then back to family friendly, back and forth, back and forth. A sort of waxing and waning of what is acceptable and what isn't, until eventually there's just sort of this in-between that we see now, because TV's kind of gone off the edge, like no one really cares anymore, so there's just a beautiful balance. Because everyone's moved on to things like streaming platforms and, you know, YouTube and all this glorious stuff we enjoy now. But it would be truly tragic to see this as another casualty, to see Joe Rogan of all people, the most almost milk toast kind of guy because he's so in the middle. Like, to take him off your platform would be wild, and that's kind of what the Neil Young crowd wanted. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter.com discussing it, like, saying that conversations lead to all these things, and they're so against freedom of speech that it's almost laughable. And the thing is, they always claim to understand it and support it, but anyone who says they support freedom of speech, except or but, if there's ever a but to that, then they don't support freedom of speech. It's always a lie. There's always some little factor, some little facet, some little bit of power they want to lord over someone else. And it's just kind of annoying. Like, leave people alone, let them enjoy the things they want to enjoy, man. Like, how can you not realize this will swing back and hit you at some point? Any power you give to someone else over you will be used against you. It won't always be the people you don't like. It won't always be the opinions you detest. It'll be shit you care about. And really thinking that you're always going to be control is so silly to me. It's so goofy. Like, why wouldn't you just want to have freedom for people? Why, why don't you want to enjoy things? Why don't you want to just have a good time? Why is the internet got to be this constant escalating war, this battle for some sort of victory over your opponent? Like, can't we just, you know, go back to getting along, go back to posting just fucking dumbass memes? Actually, nah, nah. Keep fighting. This this makes for good content. This is uh, this is something fun to talk about, and I, I can't do without it, actually. 
I kind of like the direction we're going in this constant battle. It's it's fun. I want to be a part of it. I want to narrate over it. I want to be the Fallout voice actor, the one telling you how war never changes. I want to be that. I want to talk over every little dispute, every little battle. I want to I want to share my voice with the world. And if I can do that, then all the casualties of war will just be part of the meme, a part of the lore. So, if you enjoyed my voice, if you enjoyed what you heard, this lackadaisical sort of garbage popcorn content, then how about you go on down to the subscribe button, give it a nice little a little assault, make it, make it uncomfortable. Violate the YouTube terms of service by touching that subscribe button. Do things to it that would be unspeakable on this platform. Make it scream, make it cream, you don't cook, you don't clean, but let me tell you how you're gonna get that ring. Subscribe. Also, gobble me, swallow me, drip. Bye!